I think I'm ready. Okay, because we're live. I think we are. You and me, Susan, we're live. Yes. <laughs> okay, <And> experience. <laughs> it is quite an experience. Um, and I want to say hello to the people who are seeing us now. Um, this is the first broadcast of the Coracle Live, isn't it, Susan? Yes. And um, we are coming to you on this Friday night and want to really welcome you. I see that there are some people watching, so that's wonderful. I can see a number five there. And um, so it's just really great to, to have some, some folks joining us. Um, this event, um, hosted by the Sisterhood of Avalon, is um, our first Coracle Live event. And uh, my name is Sydney Bell, and uh, I am a member of the Sisterhood of Avalon and really delighted to be um, your host this evening. And um, we are uh, just embarking on these um, uh, Coracle Live events. and. Um, it's an opportunity for us to showcase um, women, uh, members of the Sisterhood of Avalon who are authors and uh, creative people, um, and just to talk about uh, your, your process and, and your work and kind of a, hopefully a fun and relaxed atmosphere. Um, this is our first time really using this platform, isn't it? And um, Facebook Live. So myself and Susan here, we, I think we both will admit we're maybe just a little nervous. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Bit, a little bit, but we know that it's a friendly audience out there. And um, and we're also navigating a little bit new technology, but I think I think it's working. So I can see that um, there are people joining us. If you uh, want to say hello in the chat, please feel free to do that. Let me check and see if there are people saying hello here. Um, I think people are saying hello, Susan. There's people there. Uh, Hi, everybody. Saying hello. I'm going to put that on our screen. So maybe we can get a sense of, of who's joining us. So welcome. So this, um, the Corgal is some ongoing programming presented by Sisterhood of Avalon. And um, we are going to have a chat this evening with uh, Susan Morgan. Uh, I'm seeing people say hello. Uh, Jenna is here. That was awesome. <laughs> Stacy's here. Hello, hello. So if, if you don't know, if you've just kind of stumbled across uh, our little broadcast here, um, the Sisterhood of Avalon is a fully incorporated nonprofit Celtic women's mystery organization. And we come together, share our wisdom, and seek to provide learning opportunities to women uh, who wish to follow a path that balances intuitive wisdom and scholastic achievement. So that's just a a, a brief little snippet about the, the SOA. And um, so these Coracle Live broadcasts, um, it's a new feature uh, of our Coracle offerings. And um, this one, this is our first uh, of our monthly author chats. And I'm really delighted that we have Susan Morgan with us. Hello, Susan, how are you? I'm okay, Sydney. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. And hello to everybody who is tuning in. It's really great to uh, to see you here. And um, before we get into our conversation uh, with Susan, um, I do want to let people know we have um, an exciting event coming uh, up on, uh, I believe it's May 22nd. Susan, why don't I have the date? Me. It is May uh, we have May 22nd, 22nd. and I'll put um, we have Christopher Hughes who's going to be uh, joining us and I'll put a link in the chat to um, if you're interested in signing up for that event as well. 
Okay. So, Susan. Sydney. Hello. Hi. You know, it's been so great getting to know you a little bit more over the past few months of, as we've been on this core call uh, committee together. And um, I know you have such a passion and commitment for, for this kind of work. And But before we get into talking about your creative work and your poetry and all that kind of stuff, um, I wondered if you'd tell me a little bit about your connection to the SOA. How long have you been a, um, a member of the Sisterhood? I've been a member for six years. Oh, and, right. um, I had heard about it like 10 years ago from another sister and mm -hmm. I felt called, but for some reason I didn't actually join. And then mm -hmm. I went to the first ninefold and I joined immediately thereafter. And it was, it was like coming home. And um, as I said to you earlier, I plan on staying a sister until I'm dead. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I just love it. And um, I'm, Currently, the fundraising trustee on the board of trustees. I've been doing that for about a year and a half. And just the past few months that we've been talking, you and I and uh, Gina, mm -hmm. um, I'm now the chairperson of the Coracle Committee. Right. So we'll be having some wonderful events coming up. So, you know, keep an eye on the Sisterhood page because we got some lovely things coming up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so you've been a sister for about, did you say four years? Six years. Six years. And, and yeah, just really involved in both on, on the board and, and helping mm -hmm. organize these events. Um, what would you say drew you to the, the path? Um, I've always felt a connection to Celtic. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, my background is Portuguese, but I've always felt this. So now I'm actually searching and I'm finding that connection from Portugal to the Celtic tribes, because apparently at one point Portugal was one of the Celtic tribes. So I'm currently doing research on that and hopefully starting a new book on the god goddesses of Portugal and having it connect to our Welsh tradition of the sisterhood. Awesome. So yes, let's start talking about your um, your creativity and your writing and um, uh, you know the works that you've you've been involved with. And I think particularly exciting is you've got a book of poetry mm -hmm. um, called Ebb and Flow. That. Oh, yeah. um, mm hmm. And so, how did you come? To, tell us a bit about the book at first like d describe it for us it's just i think of it as um it's a book of poetry but it's a book of women's thoughts my thought my thoughts mm -hmm. through the past four or five years i've been writing mm -hmm. poetry since i was in high school um just on and off i didn't keep a lot of things that i wrote during most of those years you know, getting married having children but over the past say four or five years i would write them once in a while, jot them down, stick them in a folder. And mm -hmm. um, the end yeah. of last year, I just thought that it seemed to be a good time to pull everything together. And mm -hmm. because it's my thoughts over the past four or five years of my life, I chose the um, ebb and flow title because that's how I felt my life has gone. It's just a very... Mm -hmm you know, gone back and forth like the waves. I'm I'm very attached to the water. And even on the cover, mm -hmm. this little this little painting here. I actually did the painting right before I did one of our intensives. And uh one of our sisters actually has the original of the painting. So that I mean that's basically it. You know, it's just that this is it's kind of, you know, when people say they cook and it's like this is me on a plate. Well, this mm -hmm. is this is my innermost thoughts, I guess, over the past few years. But that's really beautiful. Could we take a look at the cover again, just really quickly, uh, both just to show the uh, oh. and and there's the the beautiful artwork. Beautiful. And well, um, thank you very much. my friend Tracy just put in in the chat that she loves it. She actually has it. <laughs> 
That's wonderful. And well, you're getting also some love from Virginia there, says it's uh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. And um, looks like I think that's Jenna. She didn't realize that that was your own art on the cover. So that's that makes it extra special, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's funny because she's actually seen the original. Has she? Yeah. Yeah, she has yeah. at, at um, one of our intensives when I gave it as a sister gift. So, yeah. Wow. That would be quite a special sister gift to receive for sure. <laughs> so it's just um, um, oh, thanks, Jenna. I just I just love you know poetry. I love English, and originally my thought was to become an English teacher, and I ended up being a yoga and belly dance teacher. So go figure. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. You just never know the winding path, right? That's going really, to bring you to kinda, the. To you know, everything just kind of meshed together and I brought the goddess into my yoga and my belly dance with the divine feminine. So everything just kind of, you know, can, kind of came together that way. Well, it sounds like your writing is, you know, a really personal reflection mm -hmm. of, of your life. And um, I'm wondering if you would be willing to speak a little bit more to what has influenced you as a writer, would you say? I when I started, I think it was just love for the language. I loved English. I loved English literature. Um, mm. That was why originally I wanted to be an English teacher, and it just didn't work out. But I love words. Mm. And um, mm. I don't know where my, uh, when my inspiration comes from. It's just usually as I'm falling asleep. I always keep my phone next to my bed because as I'm starting to fall asleep, words will just come to me and I sit up and I type them into my phone really quickly. But it's just, um, I think it's just that love of, of language and English, English language. Um, and I just love to write in the way the words come together, you know, and for me, it's, mm. you know, some of them, uh, some of the poems are more heartfelt and some of them are for me very spiritual and goddess oriented. So it sounds like it just flows yes, through it you. It does. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, as a as a reader, um, would you? Uh, you know, we often have this debate of you know paper versus ebooks versus audio books. Um, where, where do you, where do you stand there? How, how do you like to read? I'm on both. Um, I'm on both. Uh, right. fiction yeah. at this point in time is almost all on my Kindle. Nonfiction is hard copy because I underline and I highlight and I scribble notes. Um, most of the books I have at this point, you know, the nonfiction, they're, they're all spiritual. There's a, there are a lot of Avalon books, a lot of, uh, genus books, um, you know, mm -hmm. other other sister authors books that I have. So I like to have those actually in my hands. So and so I can go back. I don't find it mm -hmm. as easy to flip back and forth in a Kindle book for nonfiction. Um, mm -hmm. And I just like to write and as thoughts come to me, I'll, you know, make little notes and in, in the corners. Oh, right. I read this, but then I heard the author say this. So I'll write that down. So right. yeah, fiction, Kindle, that's my nighttime thing. Nonfiction book, that's when I read during the daytime. I'm totally with you there, Susan. I, I made a, a much easier um, transition with fiction to to Kindle or, or borrowing uh, from a e-library. Um, it's so handy, but yeah, when it comes to you really diving into something I'm studying or learning, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, have a harder time doing that on a, an electronic format for sure. Um, there's a, a question here for you from Virginia. Did you do any automatic writing with the goddess or other energies? You know, Virginia, I'm not sure because like I said, it's it. the words seem to come to me for some of the po poetry um, while I'm in that space right before I fall. So I'm not quite awake and I'm not quite asleep. Mm -hmm. um, I find if I sit during the day sometimes and try to force it, it doesn't come. But when mm -hmm. I just let my mind 
be free. And um, like I said, right before I fall asleep, it's like something is coming through me and the words just start to come. And mm -hmm. I just let them. Sometimes it interferes with sleeping, but I found that it's it's worth it. Does that answer mm -hmm. your question? Mm, I think it, I think it does i will well maybe i guess i shouldn't speak for virginia um but virginia feel free to ask a follow-up question yeah absolutely um, anybody ask me you know what whatever you'd like um so would you do you think you have any writing quirks or what do you would you say is your most unusual writing quirk i think it's writing while i'm half asleep <laughs> right yeah yeah yeah, in that sort of that, that liminal space it, between exactly it liminal yeah. is the perfect word for what I'm feeling right. um when when this stuff starts coming to me. Or mm -hmm. if I'm meditating, you know, mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I'm a, a certified kundalini yoga and meditation teacher. So sometimes when I'm meditating, mm -hmm. things will start to come. You know, the thoughts that you're supposed to push away. Um mm -hmm. I sometimes I'll just let them come and that'll turn into something. So it seems to be I write my best when my mind is somewhat unfocused and I'm just letting letting this come to me. Yeah, letting it flow. Yes. Now, we we talked about this before we came on and, and you agreed to, to share some excerpts of your poetry. Uh, with us, would you would you like to share one one ex excerpt now? Well, and then we'll we'll hear a, a bit more of your writing a little later on. Okay. Well, I did, I I picked two just in case. Um, okay. Most of the they're very most of the poems that were written for this book was while my um, marriage was kind of falling apart, and then while I was separated, and then met someone. And now I'm back with my husband. So most most of the poems through this uh, have to do with what I was going through over the past three or four years. Although some mm -hmm. of them are spiritual in nature. And I figured for tonight, that would be where I would go mm -hmm. um, as my sisters. And I love my sisters. So one of them that I had written, um, and most of my, my poems don't really rhyme. I'm not one of those roses are red, violets are blue type of poets. But I wrote this for a dear friend um, a couple of years ago, and it pretty much explains how I feel about my sisters and the Sisterhood of Avalon. And um, <clears throat> it's called Sisters of the Soul. Mm. Uh, sisters of the Soul, bound by more than blood. Sisters of the Soul bound by love, bound by spirit. Sisters of the soul, bound by feelings, emotions that reach beyond this life. Sisters of the soul, like the tree of life, our roots run deep, strong, supportive, nourished. Sisters of the soul, bound, past, present and future sisters of the soul that's it mm, that's beautiful thank you <laughs> um an ode to community and um i can hear you know that like you said when we first started that you're a sister for life you'll yes. be here and and I can hear that coming through in, in your words and um, just your love of, of the community. Thank you so much for for sharing that. that you was know, just service to sisters. So that, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and um, oh yeah, my mind's just going in that's uh, okay. a few um, different directions. Um, there's a question in the in the chat for you um, uh, from Diana is asking about advice. Do you do you have advice to anybody looking to publish their first book or talk about how you kind of went well, through that? Process? Um, this is actually my second book. My first book was published by Girl God Books. I don't know if anyone is familiar with them. Yes. On, uh, Facebook. So Girl God mm -hmm. Books, and she has 
many books and the first I've been, I'm in several of her anthologies, but right. her, my first published book was by her uh, as part of her um, My Name Is series of books for children that took mm -hmm. women who goddesses or women who had been demonized and put them in a positive light for children. Mm -hmm. So mine was, um, right. my name is Isis the Egyptian goddess, which came out around the time mm -hmm. that Isis was, Isil was doing what they were doing. Uh, this one, this one's pure me. And um, mm -hmm. I looked, you know, at other, at actual publishing houses and I decided to just self-publish and I went through Amazon and it's, it's KDP, mm -hmm. Kindle Direct Publishing. I think I saw that, um, one of the other sisters wrote that she had she had self published her first novel last year. Um, I didn't so, yeah. um, Kindle, it was it was easy except the getting you know the typeset and everything, but it was relatively mm -hmm. easy. They take care of a lot of the work, you know, the money, the royalties, everything, and um, so you basically I did the writing. I set it up. I did the typeset. I obviously I did the cover, and uh, the, and I did the back. And it has a picture of me. Uh, so it was a relatively easy thing to do. So Diana, I suggest you do it. <laughs> Your meditation book. So you know it was it was easy. I mean, instead of going, I mean, the next book I'm doing, I'm hoping to have done by an actual publish publishing company mm -hmm. instead of. Um, self-publishing but for this it was so personal and since i had the words and i did the paint the, the cover art i kind of want to publish it myself mm -hmm. so it is on amazon uh in hardcover and uh on kindle and it's also available through my website um if you'd like it autographed so it, great it and i think i will see if my magic here will work to put it in the chat uh because I've got, let's see if that works. Hopefully y'all can see it. I I, I, I pasted um, Susan's uh, oh. website in, in, in the chat there. So um, yeah, I think it showed up there. And so um, what is your favorite time to write? You know, I think you maybe talked about this a little bit already, didn't you? Like, um, like you often have the inspiration kind of in, in bed, but is that your favorite time to write? I think, you know, when, when I'm in that liminal space before mm -hmm. falling asleep, mm -hmm. it's the words, it's, it's instead of coming out in full sentences, it's like a flow of words. And so it's the words I'm putting down, or it'll be like four or five, you know, one grouping of words will come in and I'll say, oh, okay. And I'll take that, stick it in my phone. And then at some point when I think I'll sit down, look at all these little snippets, which was almost the, the name of the book. I was going to make it snippets and I changed it right. because that's how right. it comes to me in snippets. And then I'll take all mm -hmm. the snippets and I'll sit down and I will just see what comes to me. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. from experiences. I have one in here. Um, I think it was shortly after my husband and I split. My place to go for renewal is the ocean. And I had mm -hmm. driven down um, Cape Cod for anybody who's in Massachusetts. I drove down the Cape to one of my favorite beaches and I was actually getting out of the car and almost running to the water to, to connect with the, the sea. And I fell. And um, I was actually, I was actually crying in the sand, like help me goddess. And that turned so that experience turned into one of the poems in my book. So it was as I was just sitting as I was kneeling down on the sand, I was just overwhelmed by this, feeling and the po the poem just came the words just came to me as i was as i was there so that that experience is actually in the book 
Wow, it sounds really, really powerful. Um, and it just sounds like you had a lot of sort of maybe insights or revelations. Like, I'm wondering, what, would you say that you had um, that, you know, what did would you did you learn, do you think, during the process of, of writing the book? Um, Your part of did you part of in? them, I think, really, uh, with some of the ones I've written helped as I was going through um, this is sisterhood related uh, through our cycle of healing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're dealing with, you know, our shadow. Sometimes writing mm -hmm. things down like that, like that experience at the beach mm -hmm. helps me to connect more with, cause that, that's all, this is, that's all shadow work. So some right. of the, some of the stuff was so, was so deep that it connects to my shadow work and it helps me, okay, where is this coming from? Um, a lot of it, 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 it works great with descent. Um, so it helps me, I think, to heal, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I don't know, cause so much of it is like you're really going inward. Right. And sometimes it's like reaching your hand into your soul and you're pulling out the words and this is what mm -hmm. comes out. So, and that in turn helps with the healing process as I'm working with our cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the stuff is is old. I, I have one poem. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother until I was seven. And I think of her as my mother. And when she passed away, mm -hmm. there was an experience I had that I didn't want to deal with it. And I ran and I went in under a bed and everyone came it was like you know all i could see was hands as they were trying to pull me out from under the bed so here i am a lot of years later decades later that i was still affected i'm still affected by her her death and mm -hmm. that one experience of finding out that she was gone and people trying to pull me out from under the bed that experience mm -hmm. is is also in there so that even though I still think of her, I'm in my early 60s and I still think of her every day, but being able to write that down is a little cathartic, you know, because um, mm -hmm. I try not to think about that part of her, just the happy things. So that was that was very mm -hmm. healing for me to be able to write that down, how I was feeling, because I have this memory. So it was I can remember it. I wrote the poem and now it's not as painful if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, yes, that it's um, a really a healing process yes, for you. It can be very um, much so. It's creating the expression. Uh, uh, it's, it sounds like it provides a kind of a vehicle for you to uh, maybe explore things that have been painful for you mm -hmm. and uh, you mentioned um, the cycle of healing, and um, maybe if there's folks tuning in who are, you know, aren't members of the SOA, that that's a, a process that we engage in for healing those soul wounds, right? And and just really supporting supporting you in that, which is which is wonderful. Um, uh, would you say that there's been sort of any surprises for you in this creative process? um in in this work of you know writing your poetry and writing your um i don't know if surprises it's like i'm i'm very well aware even before i came into the sisterhood i was somewhat aware of what my shadow was only i didn't know that word for it at that time mm -hmm. um but it has helped me our cycle of healing as well as the writing has helped me dig a little bit deeper to look at those things that they keep repeating they keep repeating and repeating mm -hmm. that we're trying not to do mm -hmm. so that sometimes with if i can take that experience and i can write about it you know sometimes I, i'll write just for myself i have a book you know that i just you know jot things down mm -hmm. um it's helpful for me I don't know if it's so much a surprise because I, I think I know um, where most of my issues come from. Um, so I haven't actually been surprised yet, but I know that when I sit down and I write about them, it's it's very freeing mm -hmm. for me, especially mm -hmm. if I do it in conjunction with our work. 
Right. Right. Bring that in intentionality to it a little bit. Right. It sounds. And Virginia says setting the soul free. And that's, mm -hmm. that's exactly, you know, there mm -hmm. are things we know we hold on to them forever. And, you, you know, that's one of the things that I love with the sisterhood is that we mm -hmm. have this, this thing in place that helps us to deal with our shadow issues and the things that hold us back from being, you know, who we are and, and grabbing our sovereignty with both hands and don't let go, you know? And um, so it, it kind of, kind of works out pretty well for me. Well, we are here with Susan Morgan. And, and if you're just tuning in, this is the Coracle Live, uh, the, the very first sort of episode broadcast hosted by the Sisterhood of Avalon, um, where we are sitting down with um, our, our sister authors and creatives and and learning about a little bit about their creative process and and uh, about them and, and, and their work. And really just thrilled, Susan, that you've volunteered or been vo voluntold. I was voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, brave soul to, uh, you know, to have to engage in these conversations. And um, so uh, at this time, wondering if you would be so kind as to uh, maybe share a little bit more of, of your work with us. You okay. said you maybe had another piece that you uh, were going to uh, going to read for us. Okay. Also, this is this is also related to the sisterhood. Um, I don't know because I'm assuming that most everyone here are sisters and they're familiar with our our cycle of healing and whatnot. And I think I actually wrote this during one of our can I say quest? One of our <laughs> one, one, of, one of the one of the workings I was doing for yep. sisterhood. Um, and as we're coming into you know the cycle where we we are in now. So I, I've got, um, slowly I inhale, consciously mm -hmm. I exhale, willingly I descend. I will fear, but will not cower. I do not wish to look, but I will not close my eyes. I may tremble, but I will not fall. I will be strong, I will confront, I will ascend, and I will emerge. Well, you've really taken us through the whole the whole cycle there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, sometimes I think especially at the beginning when you're just coming into the sisterhood and you're looking at the cycle and you're going, Oh my god, mm -hmm. I you know, and it's scary when you first go into descent. So that was actually, I think mm -hmm. I'd already done the cycle maybe three times when I wrote that. So I mm -hmm. fully knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the first couple of times of descent, I didn't want to do this. I mean, why would you? But then once I realized exactly mm -hmm. what it was doing is like, yes, I'm willingly doing this mm -hmm. and I'm willingly going to look at what's there mm -hmm. and what do I need to do? and confront this issue and fix it, come back out and emerge better than when I went in. Does that make sense? It does. And, you know, you're, you know, using the term, the, the, like willingly, like this is, this is what we intend to do. This is our, you know, that reclamation of our, our, our sovereign, mm -hmm. our sovereignty through, you know, um, and Jenna talks about fully conscious self determination, right? And and that really was evoked in your in your beautiful poem. And um, I also really like how you contrasted um, fear and and cowering, right? Sort of. Um, and w would you? I, I guess I'm curious about the the, the difference. So you say I I forget exactly, but you, you said something about I will feel fear, but I I will not I cower. I will fear, but I will not cower. Mm -hmm. So I think the first couple of times I did descent is like I was scared silly um, because like I'm somewhat aware of what my shadow issues are and it mm -hmm. wasn't anything I really wanted to deal with. 
-hmm. and the first two years, even the third year was dealing with the same, same issue. Uh, and I didn't want to look at it and I didn't want to see what it meant and how it affected me in my life. But by that third time around, I was ready. You know, the first couple of years is like, I'm not really ready for this, but then I was ready. So I'm going to do this willingly. I'm going to do what I need to do to help mm -hmm. myself, you know, to become mm -hmm. me more authentic, um, truer to myself. Whatever we do, you know, mm -hmm. to heal, I guess I was, I, I was very willing to do what I needed to do to right. start healing those issues. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's such, it's, it's such a big undertaking and the use, like tapping into that, that creative, that, that source is such a, a powerful tool often in, in our healing. Um, thank you for that, that, that reading. And, um, you know, I hope you're reading some of the, the yeah, comments. Jenna is, Jenny, Jenna is asking if I can post it, but I don't think I can, I can't use the chat on my end. Oh, right. Um, we may not be able to figure, figure that out, but, um, um for those, uh, on our aisle, I can mm -hmm. put it on my my page for anyone who's interested. Um, I think it's in the tour stone somewhere whenever I wrote it a couple of years ago, but, um, but I can definitely put it on my page on the aisle, my personal page, not my fundraising page. Right. Right. That's, that's that, is that okay. I can do that. That's the, whatever you're able to do is, is, is fabulous. Um, and again, I just want to let people know who have maybe just tuned in that we're sitting here um, chatting with uh, sister author Susan Morgan, and we have, uh, you know, some more questions and, and discussion to have. But um, I wanted to let people know that um, this this author chat is something that we're going to be doing uh, monthly, generally, uh, with the Sisterhood of Avalon and, and being in conversation with other uh, sister author and, and creative folks. So uh, keep an eye open for our, our schedule. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more as we wrap up about our upcoming offerings. Um, but I wanted to let people know that um, We've got a PayPal tip jar for um, Susan here, and I've just posted it in the chat, so hopefully it pops up. So um, these are free offerings, but if you do feel so inclined to uh, share a small contribution uh, with our author uh, pr presenter, uh, that her um, that's her uh, PayPal uh, email address there, mysticalshores at, at gmail.com. Thank you. So, um, Susan, would you say that writing um, energizes you, tires you? How, how does it make you feel physically, the, the creative act of? I love it. It doesn't, it doesn't tire me. I would say it energizes me um, until afterwards because some of the things that I'm dealing with for my poetry anyway, not my other writing. Um, a lot of my other writing... Um, like in the anthologies, tends to be very feminist, goddess feminist oriented. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in Sage Woman. I, I wrote an article for Jurita Magazine, which is a belly dance magazine. I did that years oh. ago. And um, I currently am the goddess columnist for paganpages.org. And that's a free okay. monthly e sign if anyone's interested. Um, really really good site there's columns on the goddess that's me god's book <laughs> reviews uh i've actually reviewed um two or three of uh, gina's books uh and they're all on the website um what is the website it's paganpages.org paganpages.org okay. mm -hmm. and it's free comes out about the first of every month we have a wonderful editor, but like everyone else, she's running in 10 different directions. So sometimes it's the second, sometimes it's the third, but it just came out actually, I think yesterday. So there's one up there and um, my goddess 
my goddess column this month was Sheila Nagig. So I'm not sure how some people are going to feel about that, but I had a lot of fun writing that, looking at all her stuff and her, just the pictures were so fun, so fun. You you do a lot. There's a lot that you're involved in, and um, obviously this um, you have a, yeah a, a passion for it, and 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 you're saying that you love it. So it sounds like it gives you energy. I do. I love. I mean, the, the poetry is more personal. Um, some of my mm -hmm. goddess poems are personal to me, but when I'm writing mm -hmm. about the goddess, like for pagan pages, it's like I just. I have several oracles and I'll just pick, this is the goddess I'm gonna write about, or I have uh, Patricia Monaghan's mm -hmm. Goddess and Heroines book, which is awesome. And I try to find different goddesses and I have just recently changed it. Instead of just goddesses, it's goddesses and the divine female. So it can also be not necessarily goddesses, but strong female figures that, we could consider divine. Um, yeah, Jenna about Girl God Books. Um, her name is Trista Hedron, and she started with writing a couple of um, children's books for her kids. And then she went into adult anthologies, mostly for women. So I don't know. Hold on one second. I'm here. <laughs> okay. You haven't depended. So uh, <laughs> everybody, those are my ponies. Um, so the first one we actually did was called Whatever Works, Feminists of Faith Speak. So women, mostly, uh, all different faiths. There's um, Christians, there's pagans, um, women who follow Judaism, everything so it's being a feminist by their viewpoint and from that she went into again keeping the same thing this one is jesus mohammed and the goddess um and there's so then each of the children's books that came out so mine was isis uh, and there was also mm -hmm. Lilith and Medusa. Mm -hmm. So each one of those then had its own anthology. So this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the anthology here I am, um, that goes along with the children's book. And so I'm one of the editors here. And as you can see, the forward was by our own Jenna. Right. So, yes. Um, this is awesome. This is on... Um, Amazon, I guess it's everywhere. It's also available through um, Girl God website, but I don't have that off the top of my head. But uh, so that's all on Isis or Aset, depending on what name you want to call her. So I had several pieces in there. Like I said, Jenna did the forward, which is excellent. Um, Jenna likes my ponies. <laughs> um, so it's it's an excellent, if you don't know anything about the Egyptian goddess Isis, this is perfect, perfect um, introduction to her. Uh, yeah, it has, I think, three or four of my, I wrote three or four pieces for that. Um, and I started with Isis. She was my first, my first goddess. And from her, I went into... The, the Celtic, and I actually asked for permission. I, I know some people look at me and it's like, that's weird, but because she was my first goddess and um, I wanted to make sure that it was okay with her that I started to go into a different mm -hmm. tradition and I started taking another course that was called the Ninth Wave. And from there, that brought me more into the Celtic, which brought me to the sisterhood eventually. Um, so I feel that even though I'm here mm -hmm. now and I'm here to stay, Isis got me started she, and she gave me permission to do what I felt mm -hmm. my spirit needed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Tracy has, um, yeah, the girl, girlgod.com. Mm -hmm. So all, there, there all was the a, books are there. 
there was a question earlier about posting sort of all of these resources you've been mentioning on the re, on the the aisle, and uh, I'm sure we can do that. And and Jenna, absolutely, sort of absolutely, 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 I can do that. Um, Great. The other ones I I was I'm in like two anthologies from uh, is I don't know if anyone it's Mago M A G O Mago Publications, um, I'm trying to th I think it's Mago.com M A G O, um, mm -hmm. it's Helen. Oh yeah, I, I can't her. think of her last name. Helen yeah. Huang, mm -hmm. um, and she has they have several anthologies out as well. And I mean, one of her feminist ones and the other one was celebrating seasons of the goddess, which is about different things with the goddess from around the world. Mm -hmm. so, Wonderful. We have Wonderful. all these books all over the place. You do, you do. Yeah. It's amazing. It's awesome. Um, so going back to, you know, the craft of, of, of writing, and this is kind of a, just a, a silly question, but what one thing would you give up to become a better writer if you felt that there was growth that you that you could do in your craft um food you, <laughs> you would trade sort of that's one person <laughs> for another <laughs> yeah yeah i think so um i love food so it would be you know quite the sacrifice mm -hmm. um my um in the chat Shar squire here. She's my PR goddess. She's wonderful. She does my website. She does my flyers. She does everything. And she's posted all the books, uh, all the websites it listed in this link that um, Fabulous. that she's and, and that that poem that uh, about the cycle is actually she found it in the tour stone. So that's there. Fabulous. Awesome, thank you. So, so we're kind of about to to wrap up here, but I'm curious to know about you know your influences or your favorite uh, writers. Do you have any sister or fellow authors that you'd like to give a shout out to? Poetry wise, I adore Nikita Gill. Um, As she's Nikita. amazing. She's amazing. Right. And there's another uh, another poet. What is her name? Um, I'm going to get this wrong. Excuse me one second, because I have her oracle in two. Okay, it's Amanda Lovelace. Oh, yes. Uh, she's I in, in my head. I almost said Linda Lovelace, and that would have been completely wrong. Um, but um, but yes. yes, yes. Oh, that's right. I, yeah, it's a wonderful deck, and she has several books of poetry out and uh mm -hmm. nikita gill does i mean both of them i find amazing from a poetry standpoint great 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 thank you well um okay, we are sort of <laughs> up here but you want to i try to stay away from Susan? cookie butter can i have nutella instead you can have whatever <laughs> you like. Um, <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to share about your poetry, your published works, or your process? I don't really have a process per se. I mean, when I'm writing nonfiction, uh, like right now, I'm, I'm in the midst of just doing a lot of research for what I'm hoping is going to be my next book on the goddesses of Portugal. Um, mm -hmm. So I've got, I've been doing research. I've got bookmarks all over the place. Um, a lot of the stuff that I write, like for these anthologies, most of it, it just comes from the heart. You mm -hmm. know, there's nothing, each of the pieces in the anthologies are, they're just written. You know, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a flow of words. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I have really enjoyed hearing about um, your your work, your 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 
tap, you know, your expression of Awen and how it's it's such a healing process for you. It was just so wonderful to hear about. And um I'm just want to share my gratitude to you for um for for sharing of yourself and for sharing of your 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 poetry and your writing with us. Um, it's been a, a real pleasure and and for being vulnerable enough to kind of join us here and to be our first um, uh, author that we talk with. I think it's you make a great first offer, author. Thank you. For these I'm books. looking forward to the next couple of months when I'm sitting in your seat. Great. <laughs> doing the hosting instead of being, you know, uh, interviewed, I'd rather be the interviewer. Um, so, Believe me, I knew that. That's yeah, why I but, love you know, this. You, you made this very easy for me. That's why you're our communications matron. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. Uh, I'm glad it was you I was talking to. It was I can breathe now? <laughs> Good. You can take a breath because now we'll talk for just a couple more minutes as uh, Coracle committee members together, right? Yes. Um, because. Uh, both you and I uh, volunteer and, and look to support bringing these Coracle mm -hmm. events forward. And you are doing so much work with this. And so I wonder if you would um, want to maybe give a, um, let people know who's coming up next. Okay. Um, in, in on June 4th, we have um, Anwin Avalon, uh, also a sister. She does mm -hmm. um, water witchcraft. So her foot, that's actually the name of her first book was Water Witchcraft. Her second one mm -hmm. is called The Way of the Water Priestess. And I'll be discussing these books with her as well as her website and the courses that she offers. Um, I think she has the Well Maiden and, you know, several others. So we'll be, you know, I'll be talking to her. Mm -hmm. It's Friday night, mm -hmm. June 4th, 8 o'clock, and again, just like this on the SLA page. And uh, so we'll be talking to her about all things water. Um, and then we'll have a couple more in July and August with authors mm -hmm. that are going to be leading us into one of our uh, Coracle we, workshop, no, conference, the one in August. Is it workshop <laughs> learning so will be gearing up for that and we have some wonderful um offerings coming up over the next few months so we hope that you stay posted yeah, and come and do everything and again like cindy said at the beginning and perhaps christopher Hughes is may 22nd yeah so we have something almost mm -hmm. month almost monthly yeah. for you so i think it's going to work out well I think so. I think so. And uh, I want to thank everybody who has joined us here. It's been great to have you and have all the the, the comments and the questions for, for Susan. It was, um, you know, you just never know, uh, you know, and we, well, we figured, Susan, if it was just you and I chatting, that that would be just that fine. Would be fine. Um, that would be just fine. But how delightful to have had um have you all uh, join us here for our our first Coracle live chat and um i hope you will keep your eyes out for these upcoming events that susan was uh telling us about and uh, certainly you can hear about them on the soa page uh so if you um and then there's also the Coracle group right that people can join and and yes. get up there as well so Thank you, Susan. Yes, thank, thank you, Sydney. everybody. Um, it was a really lovely way to spend some time on a Friday evening. And um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. And we will see you again soon. Yes, Any thank you all any so much. And like I said, if you want to order the book autographed, you can go to my website. Otherwise, you can just go to Amazon from the uh, link that Sydney uh, had posted earlier. And it's also on Kindle. So whatever is the best way for you is great. And um, anybody, feel free to reach out to me on the aisle if you have any questions. And um, thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's it. I'll see you in June where I'll be hosting. I look forward to it.
I will have my glass of wine and be kick, putting my feet up and, um, and, and enjoying the conversation. So exactly. thank you. <laughs> Until then, everybody have a great evening and, and stay well. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night.